So in this example, we're told to assume that air is incompressible, and we're asked to find the height of a column of air required to give a pressure difference of 0.1 psi. And uh, give me one second here. There we go. Uh, and we're told to assume the density of the air is 2.38 times 10 to the minus 3 slugs per cubic foot. So uh, since the air is assumed to be incompressible, we can determine the height of the column just from the simple hydrostatic pressure relation for incompressible substances. So we just have put P at the bottom of the column is, let's just put that as B, is equal to the pressure at the top of the column plus density times gravity times the height of the column. So it's essentially looking like this. So we have this column of air for some height. This is the pr pressure at the top. Here's the pressure at the bottom. And we want to know when the pressure difference PB minus PT is equal to 0.1 PSI, and we want to find that height that gives us that pressure difference. So all I did to go from here to here is just subtract PT from both sides. So we can go ahead and solve for H here. So H would be PB minus PT divided by rho G. We plug in our numbers. Pounds per square inch would be like pounds force per square inch. The density is 2.38 times 10 to the minus 3 slugs per cubic feet. Got to love those imperial or English units. And G is 32.2 feet per second squared. And then there's a, a unit conversion that uh, we ought to do to, um, to help with the units here. Uh, one of which is, let's convert the numerator into uh, instead of square inches, to square feet. So we know that 12 inches is in a foot, and we'll square that. And then the other thing is that there's a, a unit conversion um, knowing that uh, one pound force, let me write this out, so this will all be multiplied by one pound force, oops, that has to be in the denominator, so one pound force is equal to 32.2 slugs feet per second squared. So if we plug in all those numbers and work it all out, the height will end up being 188 feet. So in order to get this small pressure difference of 0.1 PSI, we need to go 188 feet from top to bottom here to get that kind of pressure difference. So that's you know, roughly equivalent to what, like a, uh, an 18 story building. It's, it's a large height elevation. So the point of this example really is uh, you need to go to pretty large height differences to get any appreciable change in pressure when you're dealing with gases like air. Now granted, we assume that air was incompressible here. Air would often be considered uh, compressible. Even still, you have to go to pretty large height differences to get any sort of a appreciable pressure difference. So when we're dealing with gases like air, uh, you don't have to worry about the pressure difference uh, caused by differences in elevation unless you're dealing with very large elevations on the order of hundreds if not uh, thousands of feet uh, difference in elevation. Okay, we'll end the example there.